ABF, the Soldiers' Charity, asked Charlotte Rowe to design a garden for the 2014 Chelsea Flower Show. Charlotte explains that the aim of the garden is to mark the First World War and to reflect on how the landscape of the Western Front, though changed forever, has regenerated and healed. The garden is thus a metaphor for the effect of war on the human body and spirit and on its capacity to recover. Jeremy Paxman explains why he chose to read Wilfred Owen's poem Dulce et Decorum Est in the garden Charlotte designed. Um, I particularly like this, are you called a stand or an exhibit? This exhibit here, because during the First World War, men did garden in the trenches. Most of the gardens actually were not in the frontline trenches, they were in support trenches, where People tended allotments in order to be able to grow vegetables to supplement the absolutely awful military rations. And sometimes, right at the front, lots of men, when there were bits of quiet between shelling, really reveled in the natural life they saw around them, the blossom they saw on the trees, the birds they heard. Sometimes even, some of them developed an affection for some of the rats, which were there in prodigious numbers. And there's a famous story of a young lieutenant talking to another lieutenant. This is in the autumn of 1915, by which time trench warfare had become pretty permanent. And he describes to the second, second lieutenant how his men are planting daffodil bulbs. And the second one replies, how interesting our men are planting acorns because even by then they understood how long this might go on. One of those who served of course famously was Wilfred Owen. He wrote this poem which I'm going to read to you now in 1917. Wilfred Owen was uh, brought back to England suffering from shell shock and was treated in Craig Lockhart, a revolutionary institution on the outskirts of Edinburgh. But after that, and after writing this poem, which I think is the most famous denunciation of war in the world, he nonetheless went back to fight. And when he wrote to his mother to explain why he was doing this, he said, I'm just going to look after some men. And I think this is the, the key question about the First World War is, of course, why people kept faith with it for so long. What did they think they were doing in the midst of all this awful carnage? And of course, most of it was about, I think, human relationships. I think this is still true in the forces now. Wilfred Owen's poem is called Dulce et Decorum Est. It's the most famous, I think, anti-war poem in the world. I'll read it to you. Bent double, like old beggars under sacks, knock-kneed, coughing like hags, we curse through sludge, till on the haunting flares we turned our backs and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep. Many had lost their boots but limped on bloodshod. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. Gas, gas, quick boys, an ecstasy of fumbling fitting the clumsy helmets just in time, but someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil's sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs, bitter as the cud of vile incurable sores on innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell with such high zest to children 
ardent for some desperate glory, the old lie. Dulce et decorum est pro patria mori. Thank you.